Hey guys, this is Sir Doc again. No, I realized with that last video what I needed to do was actually show you the sneaking airbrushes because that was, uh, you know, some of the cooler stuff. I was all geeked out by the air compressor. Um, air compressor by itself doesn't do jack turd. What I really needed to look at was what these guys can do for you as far as the painting is concerned. And so, uh, so apologies for that, but let's take a look at that real quick right now. So... Even though the box said there was only two airbrushes that came, there's actually three of them, as you can see. And I hope you can count to three anyways. But I wanted to show you. So we pulled these out of the little cardboard box that they were in. And each one has this nice uh, rigid plastic case um, that they're in. And you open them up. They've got the, kind of this little blister pack that kind of it, it helps keep things from, from moving around. But on the inside is this nice uh, cut out, fairly rigid foam. Um, I mean, it is, it is malleable, you, you can't squish it, as, as you can see, but uh, it conforms really good and it holds things in here super snug. Um, so as you pull these guys out, this is actually pretty heavy duty. It feels good in my hand. Uh, it has a good weight to it. Um, this little cap, on this guy got a, a huge reservoir in there uh, the cap just sits on and does have a small hole I'm assuming that so you don't create a vacuum in there um, uh, and you can either add um, you know a, like a surgical tubing hose I guess is what what this guy is for here but but really you would simply just unscrew that and I've already got the uh, this uh, blue and gold hose that came with the compressor on here so I can just pop that guy on here screw it in as such and now it's kind of all set to go with that so uh, turn that air compressor back on and it doesn't take long so the air compressor what I'm realizing itself is the reason it's so small all it is is a motor that's it. There's actually no tank in this. So this thing is not uh, storing any air in it whatsoever. The only air that's stored is the air that's currently in the hose. So uh, you can see it is does have pressure. It is holding the pressure. But as soon as I press this button and it lets the air out of the hose, it starts that compressor back up. So And it fills up really quick again. So it's going to stop pretty much within a second after you finish uh, touching that button there. But while you're doing any painting, just know that, that compressor is going to run the whole time. Um, I, I am guessing airbrushing is kind of similar to if you're using a spray can where you're going to kind of go you sweep back and forth. You might do some fine details, but you're probably not going to spend hours upon hours you know, detailing and brushing. Maybe you do. Maybe I'm totally ignorant with that. And then in such a case, maybe this isn't such a good deal if you really want an external uh, uh, storage for your air that you can use it without this thing kicking on all the time because maybe this motor then burns itself out if it's just constant. So something to think about. Uh, again, I think it's okay if you're learning uh, what to do and how to do this. Um, it sounds louder on the phone, but this phone's got really, or this camera has really excellent microphones attached to it. And so this thing sounds a lot louder on the camera after I reviewed the video than it does in person. And the, in person, you couldn't hear this outside of this room. It's really quiet. Um, so that's kind of, kind of nice with that. It does put out some, some pretty good amount of air. <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, it's moving air pretty good. And I, I definitely need to learn, you can see it on my skin there, I definitely need to learn how to airbrush because that seems like a, whoops, drop that guy off. That seems like an incredible amount of air coming out of there, but the nozzle that the paint is going to come out is microscopically tiny. It's really, really small. So, uh, yeah, I'm just uh, having some fun thinking about how this is all going, going to be used. So, whoops, turn that guy off. Let the air out, unscrew the hose. That's what you want to do. Put the cap back on this guy. Let's quickly take a look at what the other ones are going to offer. 
Uh, these do come with like a little wrench uh, that's in there as well. Just kind of feels like it's made of aluminum and an eyedropper. So maybe this is what, what you'll use to add the paint to it or maybe you have to add thinner to the paint if it's too thick again which would make sense to do um, so the other one that's fairly similar to the first one is this guy here but it's definitely got a much much smaller reservoir there than than the last one you can see a big big difference with those two but other than that the gun itself is appears to be damn near identical uh, it feels the same looks the same um, only difference is this having a reservoir and this does not have a cap that goes on it it's just constantly open um, so and in the bottom of these things they actually have a little mini instruction manual it's kind of kind of like this one that came with the air compressor it's just a single sided um, sorry these guys are double sided so they do have an instructions on one side and kind of a parch breakdown on the flip side of them, which could be helpful. Oh, but heck, we got it open up right here. Let's just take a look so I can show you what I'm talking about. The back side of these cases also have just your plain old foam, uh, really squishy, but uh, it allows this gun to rest against it. You don't have to worry about it getting scratched. And of course, then this nice cutout foam is going to hold it in place. But this is what I'm talking about. So each of these air guns comes with one of these little papers. And um, so it, it goes through uh, very real, real generic, very basic things. It does tell you that you want to work with, you know, 15 to um, 50 PSI. Man, that's a crazy ass range. That's a big range for an air compressor. But I guess depending on how much paint you have to be throwing out there, that'd make a difference. And then, okay, yeah, then here's your, your parts diagram parts list a breakdown and then you know it kind of lists with the air gun totally assembled what all the parts are down over here one thing i did notice from reading through this even though this unit is made in china these instructions are in perfect english they're not in the type of english that makes it sound like it's a uh, um a non-English speaking person trying to put it together it actually makes sense. The sentences are complete. The words are correct that they use. So somebody actually took time um, for American English to come through and make sure that this is actually understandable. So even though there's not a lot of instructions here, the fact that you can read them, if, assuming you're from America watching this, uh, they actually make perfect sense. Uh, so I will give kudos for that because so how many times have you bought something? It's made in China and it's written – I'm assuming it's written in Chinese for an American audience and half the things don't make any sense whatsoever. Um, so uh, that one is not the case. And then here is this guy here. And this is kind of – again, so it comes with these little jars and vials, and I'm not sure how they get all connected, how they how they hook up. Um, one thing that is cool that I did find out about this is this little airbrush here. You know, it comes with its own little hose that you would connect. It's, it's pretty tiny. It would connect there. But then the end of this hose then connects to this regulator. And this regulator then fastens to the the top of a spray can, so an aerosol can of paint. So that's what this is for, is this is meant to attach to a can of aerosol paint. You hook up the hose, hook it up to the gun. This little knob right here will regulate um, the pressure coming out of the can. So it just, it by twisting it, the needle inside here just moves back and forth. Um, but how interesting is that that now maybe i want to do some well, i don't know if primers would work primers tend to be kind of thick but hey maybe i've got a, a can of spray paint that i really want to use of a, of a good color or maybe i'm looking to make something glossy and i've got a gloss coat or i mean maybe it even does work with a primer but um to, to pre-prime your miniatures but yeah being able to do something with this uh with this hose it's cool altogether. 
it seems like it would be a real pain in the ass to try to clean out this hose after every application you use. Uh, I don't know how easy that is. I, mean, I guess you just run paint thinner or, or, or you know, that some of that airbrush cleaner you could run through that. Um, but you probably burn through this stuff pretty quick. I uh, don't know how long this hose is. I'm not going to unwind it, but I'm guessing it's probably a couple feet. Um, and then, you know, a jar of just... This is like a bug collection jar. I don't, there's n nothing else, no other lid for it. And then there are a couple of adapters that come with this gun, including one that would be a good adapter to use for the uh, air hose that came with the compressor. So, all right, guys. Well, again, thank you for bearing through yet another episode. Sorry this was not included in the original. My mistake. Um... Still new at this whole YouTube video thing. I'm learning. I'm glad you can hang out with me um, and go through this. I'm not a professional, as you can tell, but I'm having a lot of fun doing this. I'm having a lot of fun having you guys hang out with me. So, all right. Well, this is it for this episode. And, and well, as always, look forward to the next one. Talk to you soon.